it's Kim and today I'm going to be talking about a rather serious subject and that subject is middle school. Yes, this is my middle school advice video and I'm going to be calling this particular video Kim's Declassified School Survival Guide because it's kind of like that show Ned's Declassified because he has like that guide for you but this is me just talking one on one with you guys, okay? So I asked you guys on Instagram to give me some questions that you guys have about middle school and I got a bunch of questions which I love and I basically just took most of the questions and put them in categories and I have six categories to talk about with you guys today. So that's a lot to cover so let's get started. The first category is super duper popular. A lot of you guys ask this question, how do you make friends? Well, first of all, if you guys are upcoming middle schoolers, like the fresh new 6th or 7th graders, then you guys have to know that you're not the only ones that are feeling that way. Everyone in your period wants to make a new friend because not all of their classmates from last year are in the same class as them this year. So they just want to make friends as well. Some of you guys think that you might be the only one trying to look for new friends, but no, that's so not true. Everyone wants to make friends with everyone. So yeah, that's the first step, realizing that you aren't the only one that wants to make a friend. Step two is making the first move, and that comes with confidence. Some of you guys might be really, really shy and don't really want to go up to people. You wait for people to come to you, but honestly, you have to be the one to make the first move because if you don't make the first move, no one will ever make the first move, okay, until like later on in the year maybe. But if you make the first move now, then you could be guaranteed best friends for life, okay? Like a simple, hi, what's your name, can make someone's day and be like, oh my gosh, I have a new friend. But if you guys don't do that, then there's no progress. Step three is... Conversating. So I don't know if that's a word, but conversating. This is where you are in the conversation, okay, with that other person that you don't even know that you're trying to make friends with. So what you want to do is stay engaged in the conversation because you want to have a friend out of this conversation. So you can start off by saying, hey, my name is, hey, my name is, hey, my name is Kim. <laughs> Okay, maybe not the, that dramatic, but just be like, hey, my name is fill in your name. And then say like, and I like to play soccer, or I enjoy going on Instagram a lot, or I love YouTubers or something. Just try to find a connection between you two, and if you guys are total opposites, that's great as well, because you guys can tell each other about what the other person doesn't know. So that's like conversation. Yeah, that's all I have for this category, the three-step method. Step one, realizing that you're not the only one that's feeling this way. Step two is to gain the confidence to make the first move. And step three is to just conversate and find your new BFF because you never know, the person next to you in your first period could end up being your best friend for the whole entire year. Just saying. The second category is organization. So these are just some organizational tips for you guys from me. And these tips help me personally. And yeah, let's get started. So what I did in middle school is I had a binder and in my binder I would have my pencil pouch, some loose leaf paper, and a folder for each period. And what I would do with those folders is those are homework assignments that I need to turn in or homework assignments I already turned in and that are graded. So that's what I would do. If you guys do it a different way, go ahead, but that's just what helped me a lot and kept me organized. Another organizational tip is for your locker, don't put your papers in there, okay? Leave it in your, like, your binder or folder or something. Don't stuff papers in your locker because trust me, they will be there till the end of the year. I know some of you guys might be like, oh no, I'm gonna take it out after first period or something, but guys, you guys will, mm, I said that before and I kept my web papers in my locker till the end of the year and that's when locker cleanout was, so yeah. Um, so just take my advice and don't put any food, trash, or loose papers in your locker because you will end up not wanting to take them out later on until the end of the school year. But that's just my tip. Organizational tip number three is keep track of your stuff. That's really plain and simple. You don't want to be tattletelling on the teacher and be like, hey, someone stole my pencil. The teacher's just going to be like, um, it's a pencil. I don't care. Just let me focus on 
educating all you guys, okay? So you have to make sure that your stuff is where your stuff is. You have to keep track of every single thing because honestly, middle school, you know, there's gonna be a few people who wanna steal your stuff because it's so called swag-tastic, okay? But they won't be able to steal it because you are going to be keeping track of your stuff. And what I suggest is getting like labels or something and just labeling all of your stuff from a notebook to a pencil, I don't know. Label it and be like, hey, my name's on here, it's mine, go swerve, 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 swerve. Those are my three main organizational tips. I don't know if it helped you or not, but that definitely helped me in middle school. So yeah, step one, what was it? The binder and folders. You can never go wrong with those. Step two, don't leave trash in your locker. And step three, label all of your stuff so you don't lose it. Okay. This next category is super duper 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 highly requested for me to talk about and it is avoiding drama. Okay, so everyone knows the quote, save the drama for your mama or even your llama. Okay, because seriously, no one wants to enjoy drama and I think that drama comes out the most in middle school, which is totally suckish, but you just have to learn to avoid it. See, for me in middle school, I had no drama. None at all. I just enjoyed being a middle schooler, living life, and having fun. While I see all these other people on Facebook and stuff be like, I'm a drama this, drama that. I'm like, you put this on yourself, okay? Drama comes with so much crap that you don't need during middle school, especially since if it's like your first year and you're like stressing and stuff about assignments or like tests and stuff, you don't need that drama on your shoulders because you can just get rid of that yourself. Drama usually comes from a certain group of friends. So once you see drama start to happen, one, try to fix it somehow. Talk to your friends about it. Be like, hey, you guys are starting something which is totally unnecessary, so you should stop. Or two, just leave your friends. Like, you might be the closest of friends, but if they're gonna drag you down, then what's the point of being their friend? Your friends are supposed to bring you up, not drag you down with them. So yeah, that's basically what I have to say about drama. The way I like avoided drama throughout my whole entire school year was sticking with a group of friends that always wanted to bring me up and not bring me down. You just have to learn how to fix the situation before it gets worse. So that's what I have to say about drama. I don't know if that's going to help or not, but I just suggest you guys to choose your friends really wisely because your friends in middle school will follow you to high school and from high school to then on, that's when you find your true friends, okay? Okay. The next topic is study tips. Okay, a lot. some of you guys ask about study tips because you guys actually really care about your education, which is awesome. And for me, the way I studied was basically Doing all my homework, that's all it takes, guys. Putting in effort to your homework, turning assignments in on time, and just being a really good student in class, asking questions when you don't need to, that's how I study. If I didn't understand something in class, I would like raise my hand and be like, uh, I don't get it, can you explain it a little more like thoroughly? And then my teacher would just show me how to do it, and then I'd be like, oh my gosh, yes, totally. Which comes to my point that don't be scared to ask your teacher for help just because they're like, does everyone get it and everyone doesn't raise their hand but you actually need help. Don't be afraid to be the only one to raise your hand because there could be 10 other kids in your class who needs help but are too scared to raise their hand and be like, I don't get it. You could be the trendsetter and raise your hand in class if you don't get it, okay? Another study tip is homework. You might think it's a pain in the ass, but honestly, it actually will help you, especially for math. If you have frequent math homework assignments, I had a homework assignment every single day except for test days or quiz days. So that's basically a lot of my whole entire school year. But that's all right, because I actually got better at all the math stuff that I was learning, and it was just awesome. Like seriously, I was one of the top kids in my math class, and yeah, you know why? Because I did my homework, I didn't complain, I asked questions in class, and I just got my work done. Easy as pie. With that, a lot of you guys asked, how do you maintain a really good grade? A really good grade. So what I suggest you doing is once you get an assignment or a project or something, work on it as soon as you can. Like, 
right after school, work on it. And if you're not done, go to school, go to sleep, eat all your stuff, don't procrastinate. Maybe some a little relaxing time, but then the day after, go to school, come back and finish your project. Because I know you guys are all capable of working your best, working your ass off, and finishing that project homework assignment or anything because simply it's so simple because your teacher knows that you can do it that's why they gave out the assignment it's just that the effort that you put in that counts so you should put in that effort that your teacher expects the next category is a pretty important category it is the managing your social status and your school status so what I think is that if you aren't a good student I think you should focus more on that because Having a weekend off and doing like some studying or your homework or finishing a project or something is so much more worth it than going out and watching a movie with a bunch of your friends. I mean, which one is the better outcome for you? A good time or good grades? Yeah, maybe a good time is good in that moment, but good grades will stick with you forever. Like once you develop a habit to do your work on time, turn it in on time, do your work well and efficiently, this will this habit will stick with you until high school and forever on. But if you just waste your time just hanging out with your friends and saying, oh, I'll do my work later, you know you're not gonna do this if you're having so much fun. So yeah, if you know you have priorities, I suggest that you do your priorities first before you go hang out with your friends. Most kids do stress about managing friends and schoolwork, but honestly, if you can do your schoolwork on time and finish it before the weekend, then you're set. You can go hang out with your friends because you have nothing to worry about. The students that actually do their work on time, turn it in on time, and actually put effort and, you know, do what they have to do, they are awesome because in the end, they can go hang out with their friends as much as they want because they completed all their homework and stuff. But then the kids who just hang out all the time is stuck with stacks and stacks of homework because all they do is hang out. You know, it's kind of simple, but if you guys don't understand it, you guys will once you get into middle school. But that's just my point of view of how that works. The last category is my personal favorite because it is coming out of your shell. So a lot of a lot of you guys are really, really shy and like you keep to yourself and stuff, but maybe some of you guys are like me who don't even care and want to explode into people's faces and be like, my name is Kim and I want to be your friend. Um, and that goes with like presenting in front of classrooms and like, you know, all that good stuff because a lot of people are shy and that's not a bad thing at all. I used to be the shyest kid ever. In the third grade, I remember I had to read like a poem or something or my writing in front of the whole class and then my teacher's like, good job, but blah, 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 blah. And to think that I had that criticism, my face got so red and I started to cry. Okay, so see where that went from? From that, I turned into this. And that was all because of middle school. Middle school is when I gained the most confidence, mainly because I had a great group of friends that accepted me for who I was. And because I, just, I was just having so much fun. I loved all my teachers. I was getting the education that I wanted. And I was just having a blast. Like... Ah, uh, if you guys aren't as fortunate as to get like good teachers who understand you and stuff or like you won't find a good group of friends, I still suggest that you try to come out of your shell. I mean, you don't have to hang out with one certain clique. You can like migrate to other people's cliques and just talk to everyone. That's how you come out of your shell. You start conversations, you gain confidence in yourself and you feel proud of who you are. Like, that's what coming out of your shell is. Like, don't be a little shy little turtle. Come out and be like a tortoise. Come out as a tortoise. Pop your head out and be like, hello. You guys are all capable of coming out of your shell, but it's just you that is stopping yourself from coming out of your shell. You might be really shy and you might be really scared of rejection or scared of what people might think. But as long as you think to yourself and like, I'm awesome and those other people who are bringing me down don't matter, you will do great things, my friend. So the first step is to coming out of your shell is just accepting yourself. Just accept yourself and you will do great in middle school, guys. I promise you. So that is the end of my advice video. Um, I did a lot of talking and this was really fun. It's 1v1 talking with you guys because like, that was, I feel a connection. <laughs>
I hope you guys do so well in middle school because I know you're all capable of doing well in middle school, but it's just the effort that you put in, you know? And I hope that all of you come out of your shell. And if you guys come out of your shell, don't forget to DM me on Instagram and be like, Kim, I came out of my shell. I'm a tortoise now. <laughs> but uh, even though that might sound really weird, I hope you guys do become tortoises. And yeah, I hope this video helped you because I love helping you guys. I love giving advice to you guys. And yeah, I hope you guys had an amazing day. And I hope you guys have an amazing middle school or high school or any school year yeah yeah bye love you Mwah.